embedded software testing best practices revolve around getting the right amount of testing coverage depending on the needs of your system. Getting high testing coverage for white box means you must exercise most or all of the code paths in your software. For black box, it means you have to exercise all the requirements. And as we mentioned earlier, both white box and black box are required because each type of testing has its own type of blind spot. Maybe there's some code that isn't there and the white box test doesn't know how to test it. And maybe the black box test doesn't know how to get into the deep corners to get the edge cases inside your actual implementation. Exploratory testing is valuable and useful to reduce risk, especially if there's unexpected functionality or there's some low hanging fruit for buggy software. Exploratory testing should be a few percent, maybe five or 10% of your test budget because the white box and black box testing should do the heavy lifting and exploratory testing should be there to explore edge cases that the white box and black box testers didn't think about or to take a look for low hanging fruit of buggy software. Other types of testing can be appropriate, but it all depends on your process, the application and the type of software you're testing. There are a number of testing pitfalls and the big testing pitfall is that there are too many timing and sequencing combinations, failure types, and operational scenarios for you to ever get perfect coverage. It's just not going to happen. And if you don't believe that, here, let's take a look at an example. Let's say you have a procedure that takes three 32-bit integers. And the question is, how many tests to test that procedure? Well, let's assume that there's no internal state, so there's no static variables. It's just a pure combinational function of three 32-bit values. That is 2 to the 3 times 32 power a number of possible inputs because you have 96 bits and each bit could be some different value. So you need to do all the combinations. That's around eight times 10 to the 28th input values. Now that sounds like a big number. Well, let's, let's try and make it a little more concrete. Let's assume you can do 1 trillion tests per second. So that's a lot of CPUs going on this testing and you try and do every single possible integer with 96 bits in it to, uh, to try and do that test. Well, it turns out if you do the math, that's about eight times the age of the universe. So even this simple function cannot be completely tested. And so that should give you an idea that when you're testing, you're sampling, you're using heuristics, you're hoping to find stuff. But the hard fact is there's always a combination of inputs you haven't tested. And so you're trying to get different metrics of coverage rather than complete testing for all but the simplest function. Another testing pitfall is that creating an oracle, the test oracle problem is the hard part. Uh, it, it's okay to have a person doing exploratory testing with a model in their head, but that doesn't scale because you need a lot of people if you want to run a lot of tests. And so you end up having to have pretty good requirements because the requirements drive what the test results should be. And, and that's how you build your Oracle. But this is a known hard problem. It's expensive to build the Oracle, even if you can automate the testing. Another pitfall is 100% coverage is not 100% tested. This sort of falls out of the earlier point that you can't test all possibilities. Sure, you can hit every line of code, but you can't hit every line of code with every potential value. And so the coverage is a heuristic and high coverage numbers are good, but that's a starting point, not an ending point. Similarly, 100% passing tests is not 100% bug free because you're testing only partially exercise the software. And eventually, if you remove all the bugs you find, eventually you're doomed to pass 100% of your tests. That doesn't mean that you've fixed all the bugs in the system. That means you've fixed all the bugs that you know how to find. And so it's important to do testing. It's important to get high coverage. But in the end, have some respect for the fact that if you found a lot of bugs in testing, that predicts there's probably a lot of bugs you didn't find. Ideally, as we talked about in the philosophy slide, you want to find very, very few defects in the very last pass of testing to give you a warm, fuzzy feeling that probably you caught most or possibly even all the bugs before that last phase.